Good morning, Dan from DJ More Lofts. Currently stood at our Aylesbury project. So this is the hip to gable build that we showed you uh, a few weeks back where Steve was stripping off the roof on the outside and getting everything set up. Um, we're now at the plastering stage. Our plaster is due on Monday, today's Thursday. So internally, we're pretty much ready to start the plastering stage. And um, we've had our electrician come over and do, um, call it like a, a, like, like a pre-plaster. So basically they cut out all the downlight holes and put the back boxes in for sockets and stuff like that, just to minimize any changes or any problems at a later date. There's nothing worse. I mean, a pet hate of mine is fresh plaster and then cutting fresh plaster, um, where there's no need for it. So if we can just pop out before, make a look and make sure everything is in the right spot, and um, so there's no headache on second fix. But I'm rambling. So what I'll do is I'll switch the camera around and we'll show you where we're at. So if you could imagine what we've been busy doing or what Steve has been busy doing, this is the original layout of the front box bedroom where you can see the carpet. So this is where the door was originally. What we've done is we've moved that wall over slightly to give us a space um, for the set of stairs to enable the head height up and over the existing. So one of the factors that we have to be very conscious of is the head height as we're going down the stairs. So you'll see here, we're obviously gonna to have to create a little bit of a winder. Originally, we boxed this off, but the client was really keen to try and keep some kind of little mini niche um, just for storage. So that'll probably look quite funky once it's plastered. Um, but this is one of the main factors when it comes to a loft. There's two main challenges. It's head height in the loft and head height under the stairwell. So this is one of the very conscious things that we have to be very much on top on to make sure that we can get the stairs to work. Now, with the stairs there, that's great. Slight trade-off in the sense of the, um, the top winder overhangs the, the window. Now, that is a pretty normal scenario in a lot of lofts. Um, it's just, it is one of the trade-offs. It is an unfortunate thing. Sometimes you get lucky and we don't interfere with the landing window. But what we have to bear in mind is the original house wasn't designed for another set of stairs to go up over it. So it is one of the compromises that sometimes can happen. Obviously we run this through with the clients so they're fully aware. Um, this one isn't too bad compared to some of them that we have to do in some situations, but it, it, it's, it's one of them. We do offer the client whether they want to brick it up or even change the glass to obscure. So from the outside, you can't see the edge of the stairs. In this instance though, I think once a set of blinds is put back in, I don't think it'll really be that noticeable or that bad. Um, and then what our um, stair manufacturer has done, you'll see like the little detail in this null, for example, that's because it all matches on the original. So once this is all stained in or painted, whatever client ends up doing, everything will match lovely. We're even getting the bespoke handrail made so that it literally matches perfectly all the way up. But right, let's take you upstairs and have a look. So obviously stairs leading up to, on this property, it's a master bedroom um, and an ensuite. So this landing area benefits from a V-Lux window, up and over, nice and symmetrical in the center. That's called an MK06 um, V-Lux window. There's plenty of natural light in there. From the outside though, this window is actually set up a little bit higher than the other two. Now the reason for that is there is an alcove behind that. If we put the window at the same height as the other ones, you would lose a massive amount of storage, but we'll come onto that shortly. And leading on to the room. So this is the bedroom area as such. So we've got bedside cabinets, um, beds going there, radiator under the window. This is then gonna be the ensuite. So we're just waiting on the plumber to come back and bring out the pipes. Um, same thing again, just pre-plaster. He's due tomorrow. Um, but we've got the windows in now, so we're nice and secure. Then if you can imagine this, it's, it's not a structural wall by no means, it's just a floating, floating wall. The client asked for this from pretty much day one because what the intention was was to separate. So they've got the bedroom, dressing area. So the intention is that effectively they're gonna put wardrobes along here, potentially down there, and then they've got their own little separate dressing area. And then these are the two V-Luxes that are on about. So if you can imagine that landing one's like a little bit higher, so that we can maintain this storage area here, this alcove, we may as well keep it rather than just losing it just for the light. Um, but it doesn't look that bad having the window up front up that little bit higher. Then we've got these little slope lights here. We're not gonna put down lights here. We've got little surface mounted lights here just to help um, light up this dressing area to make a nice bit of difference. And then same thing again, they've got this extra little alcove here, dressing table, storage, wardrobes, whatever. They've got a nice perfect little opportunity to put some space and utilize that. And then we've then still got the ease area that needs tidying out, but it's got all these second fix electric bits in there. But that's all decked out so that there is some storage in there as well. So suitcases, Christmas trees, that kind of stuff. It's not a massive area, but it's certainly worth utilizing. But if you can imagine, 
where we've come in the space of three and a half weeks to where we're at now, phenomenal, what a difference. And if I show you this pan, so we'll pan from here. But what we'll do, hopefully, we'll be able to pan you one of the first shots where we've got the brickwork and you see here all the existing roof that's in it and how far we've really come from the height. But I think you'll agree, looking at those pans, what a difference we've made here. It's phenomenal. Um, night and day difference with the amount of height, space, um, brightness, everything. It is just complete transformation from those early days of the loft to where we're at now. Probably around two weeks off from completion, subject to the bathroom items. Um, in here, we've got, probably got about a week's plaster in. Then after that, we've got a week in second fix electrics, plumbing and carpentry. It won't take too long to second fix up here. We are, however, changing all of the doors throughout the house. And um, we've got these 1930s fire doors that we're putting in just to comply. Um, building inspector here is local authority. As much as they're all the same rules, each individual local authority treats it differently, which is a nightmare when it comes to fire regs. So that's why we typically use an independent inspector. Not to get away with anything, it's just consistency. So we have the same consistency everywhere. Because if you could imagine, we deal with Aylesbury Vale, Bedford Borough, Bedford, uh, Central Bedfordshire, Milton Keynes Council. It's like four or five different councils. And each one, when it comes to fire regs, annoyingly treat it ever so slightly different. Um, and since Grenfell, bits have just constantly evolving and changing. Understandably, I get it. Um, but the issue is there's just no continuity, um, which is quite frustrating. So on this scenario, we've got hardwood doors, whereas most councils would accept a hardwood door with a, the L2D, L2D smoke alarm system throughout the property. On this one, council won't have it. So we've had to change, the, uh, change all the doors throughout the property, um, even putting in the missing strips and the same thing again, a little bit old hat now compared to some councils. But look, got to do what we've got to do to keep the building inspector happy. Um, just because the client had their own plans on this one. It's our architect, but they, because it's their own plans, they submitted it to local authority. It's not a problem, we work with them. It's just, it's just a little bit frustrating when all the rules are slightly different. Um, but Steve and Mario are cracking on outside now, um, basically just getting everything ready on the dormer. Done pretty much nothing on the outside there, so um, it's just been watertight. So now they're now carrying on with the battening and basically getting it all tiled in whilst the plaster is on the inside. But yeah, hopefully that's not too much of me rambling along. Hopefully we'll be able to show you some pan shots of the mid build now, um, just to give you an idea of how far we've come to where we are now. Um, but yeah, look, if you like these videos, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Um, let us know in the comments what you think, any questions, um, also anything you'd like to see in coming up videos. And what I'll try and do is get you another fully completed video of this one. And so you can still reel the difference and we'll try and put some more shots in from the very beginning to where we are now and to where we will be. Um, but yeah, enjoy your day. Catch up with you soon. Thanks for watching.